John, your students in your Paris workshop uh, made a surprise for you. They um, made a book out of some of their photos and your photos from Paris. Oh, oh. And I'm on the cover and you are too. Oh, man. The No Like a Workshop, Paris 2019 with Roxanne, Dominic, Martin, Robert. Oh, gee. Oh, this has never been done before. Oh my gosh, look at this, Roxanne. So the second part, is a, oh, it's I a saw. surprise. They would also like, as you're, you're always asking people to send you photos to critique, so they would like critiques of the photos in the video. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> this is a similar shot that I took when I was with them in the Dorset Museum of the guard or someone sitting next to a famous painting and then the relationship between the living man and the still people in the painting. And so you can actually see and feel and wonder how the photographer put this together. So we need this man here looking at pictures and then a picture over here, but not too much of the picture. If we show too much of the picture, we won't see enough of the man. If we show too much of the man, we won't see enough of the picture. And so the photographer used that judgment to be able to frame it in this way and include the necessary elements, factors, and details for the viewer of the photograph to understand what the photographer had in mind. <clears throat> this next picture over on the side is a wonderful use of what we call silhouettes, where we underexpose and we let the person in the shadow become pure black. Now he's not an individual where we try to understand who this person is personally. He becomes every man because he is a silhouette and has no features recognizable. And of course it's from the back. So now he serves not only as an individual man, but all mankind with the young woman or young girl with him. And she's making a photograph at the same time. So it was almost like a little joke or a little uh, song that the photographer was thinking about. I'll get a picture of somebody taking a picture out of a window and I'll put her father or her friend in a frame. They're both in a frame, these vertical frameworks here. And he's got three of them for the balance and it shows somewhere apart where this man is looking. And then of course the young person here looking through the camera. So he's got three or four ideas going and he put them together in a certain way so you couldn't miss them in the frame. I'm using the frame in a frame. The next one is a nice shot because it's so subdued by other elements that no photographer in their right mind would do a shot like that, but when they do it, it makes it effective because it looks so real. You see, another photographer wouldn't do it. He'd want to clear all that distraction out of there so that she saw the entire subject, and, but it wouldn't be as exciting as this one and as mysterious. And this looks more legitimate, it looks more real because it was a quick shot through something at something in the background. And it's a wonderful picture, There's maybe he's a waiter, he's standing up and we have things in the background that could be a bar, and then this wonderful person right here that they, they, they put him, so it's a big mystery. And, and individuals like mystery, that's why mystery television shows are so popular. They're trying to figure out what the mystery is. And that's wonderful in photography if you can, you can do, do a shot that causes the viewer to try to figure it out. Here's a, a, not a simple shot, but the person is doing a simple thing. He's just relaxing, smoking. I can see this, the, the smoke coming out of his mouth, but it's a very serene and, and peaceful scene. And he's also in a framework. And he's got a neat uh, position of his foot and his arm. He's thinking about something wonderful. And it causes me to wonder what he's thinking about. It causes my mind to react to the photograph and work in that way. He's got good technical quality here because he has detail in the absolute shadows over here. So there may be two or three stops here of difference, but he's been able to balance them and get the, all the details. Did you remember to wear underwear today? Oh my God, what kind of a question is that? We're doing a video. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 I felt it itch down there. Maybe that's well, where maybe, it was. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not to <I> recall. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thanks for coming, man. Yeah, I have to change my underwear. Can I, I it's an age thing. You're welcome, video, too. You? So Bye nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Bye-bye, Daniel. -bye, so We're going to see you in a week, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm glad you came, Buzz. Thanks.
good to see you. Yes, this is an image of people in an art gallery, obviously. It was taken by a woman member of our workshop. And I love the framing, the two, the two framed photos in the background, people dancing, people walking here, this man looking this way, all different aspects of the people. Very well balanced out, as I said, and framed. And this person is unique here. Now, if I was to critique this and say uh, what might be better about it, I would think the first thing, it might be a little brighter. I would like to see a, a, a more exposure to get the brightness up instead of it being so dark. But the photographer uh, also could have been thinking about the, uh, about the atmosphere in here, that maybe the darkness was part of what she wanted to convey. So that's a personal thing. But as a technical point, people ask me to, if I see anything that I want to correct or make better, or if I thought I could do something different, they want me to talk about that. And that would be, in this case, I would think that maybe my exposure could make these people a little more brilliant in the picture, a little more lighter. See, we're starting to lose this man over here. And maybe during printing, I could hold this man back, give him less light so that he'd be more apparent in the picture. He wouldn't be so dark. That's the control we have. We could also hold this woman's face back because her face has an unusual expression and we'd want to intensify that maybe, as opposed to this woman sitting down thinking in her own world. And we like to see these pictures back, the people back here looking at these images. So it's, I think it's a wonderful photograph and it tells us a wonderful story about being inside an out gallery or a museum. But the technical point, I would like to be a little darker, that's all. Now let's move over to this one here. The first thing I saw about this, of course, is the man looking up here, which is wonderful. We don't know what he's looking at, and that even makes it better because a lot of us, a lot of people, humans, like mysteries. And they're wondering, what's he looking at? And when they're wondering like that, it causes them to move closer to the photograph, to investigate it further, to see what he's looking at. Now, if I could improve this photograph, and I'm sure that the person probably included this here on the side, this aspect of another building, only because they couldn't get rid of it because they couldn't get closer. They might have, the person, the, the woman who took this picture, might have been uh, kept from getting closer because there was a wall here or there was a street and she could, you know, you couldn't get closer. That happened to Brisson a lot. It happens to me a lot. And so you have to be very careful of your framing so you don't get things in there that you don't want. So maybe this person, this woman that took this picture, would rather have this. There might have been something even equally more distracting over here that she wanted to eliminate. So she pulled the camera this way, but also got this. I don't think this was really intended to be part of this aspect. But it's a wonderful photo. She's got this person in a frame, which is fun. I like the arms, the way they're, they're like that. But also I like the mysterious look. He's, wondering, he's looking up there and we're wondering what he's looking at. That's a fine example of, of what a photograph can do. A simple photograph can provide a mystery, entertainment, wonderment, and an education at the same time on how to do it. Let's turn the page here. Oh, well, this is a shop. Of course, uh, this was a, a group of sheep here in a snowstorm. Of course, the person, no, I'm only kidding. What's the matter with you? Dominic, okay. Oh, and there's Uncle Johnny. Oh, they caught Uncle Johnny. Oh, look at this. This was a daring shot, but it worked out so well. You see, most people in their right mind would not take a picture of this because we can't see the people. And this man has one, this person has one foot off the ground. We can see the shadow under it. And the shadow of the balloon and the cocked foot of the young person here as opposed to this foot here and the balloon. Oh, and look at the feet here. Wonderful, we've got feet, feet, feet. Three pairs of feet, wonderful to think of that. And the shadow of the balloon might have been the part that drew the photographer in the most. But it's a wonderful, very well exposed. We've got the balloon, we've got enough of the legs, but we have a mysterious quality about the photograph, wondering about the people up there. And that keeps us, the viewer, engaged in the photograph. It's a lovely poem, a visual poem. And this is a wonderful photograph. They got the ball just off his fingers, right in the middle of the chairs where we can see it. Got the action of his arm, 
beautiful exposure for his arm. Might be pure white just on the end there, and that's what we want. That's what Ansel Adams, the great printer, said. Sometimes in the specular highlights, we can have a pure white, but only in the specular highlights. And we've got the chair, so he's going and he's having a relationship with these chairs. And what was nice, that the photographer knew enough to have the framing over here so that we can show the procession of chairs and gives us more information that he's going this way. Beautiful, wonderful. No critique at all on that one. Because like I said, it's better than a one. I got a similar shot of someone doing the same thing, but not as good as this, where the ball is engaged by him and his hand is back and his leg is up. Beautiful, wonderful timing, good focus, wonderful framing. Just, just beautiful. And this is what happens when determined photographers get together and work together and share information and share pleasure and smiles and work together and go to lunch together and then do something like this. Now this, I have never even thought of doing something like this. I've photographed these boats at Luxembourg Gardens many times, but I never got something like this with the man shadow through the sail of the boat, so mysterious and beautiful. We have just enough of the surroundings, the chairs and some of the trees in the background to give us a little more information about what's going on and where it is and why. But it's an old man with a model boat and that's wonderful. I love boats, I love old men. There it is, I love shadows, I love very tricky ways of making photographs, innovative way of making photographs. She's hidden behind the sail, but the most important thing is the toy boat. Wonderful toy boat and older person involved with it. Just beautiful. Martin, another shot of me and Martin, that's wonderful. Turn the page, wonderful. We have a long depth street, people coming towards us. Got this person right at the right moment here, passers-by, another person coming up behind him. Good framing, good focusing. I don't think I would uh, advise anything better than this. I don't think I, I could improve on that. So I, I can't talk about what I would suggest to make it better. This is also a wonderful photograph here with the boys carrying their luggage and, and keeping up with the older person here and the smile and the boy's legs are spread. If the boy's legs were together, that means he wouldn't be walking. So the timing was excellent on this shot and the framing as well. Wonderful, a couple reacting to a statue with a boy in the background. Beautiful framing, beautiful composition and framing, and, and the, the whiteness was preserved, and the faces were preserved. Might have been a little dodging or manipulating in the darkroom for that. Another pigeon, but it's okay. It's right in your face, it's flying, and the boy or the person is duplicating the wings with their hands. Look at how ironic that shot is. And then we have another vision of a person up here higher with things sparking off from him. Wonderful vertical format. We also have a vision here of a person looking out. So we've got three or four things working together to make this image. Just wonderful. I want to go on to other photographers while I can here. We don't have that much time. We're looking at Robert's photograph. Now Robert came to our workshop in Paris and he's a professional director producer. So that was a, much of a compliment for me that he chose to do our workshop. And this is a fine photograph that he made. I was with him when he made this, but I didn't see him exactly do this. We have the wonderful framing here. We have several people looking in the frame at one man. And he's mysterious, he's blacked out, which is very nice that we don't want to see too much detail in his face because if we saw too much detail in his face, we wouldn't see enough of them. We'd be preoccupied with his face and we wouldn't see the importance of this people here in, this, in the square. So it was very nice that he was in the shadow like this and we couldn't really see his features. Very nice. Moving on. Good framing. Nice atmosphere. Very good lighting. I don't know how I could improve that. It was very, very well done. Bridge scene but from an opposite turret. These kind of little turrets come out on the bridge, so he went over to this, the next one and photographed the bridge at a different angle than we normally see it. It was very nice, and he waited for the people to be in the right position. It's got the lighting right. The exposure is very nice. Yeah, I'd like to see people walking down here, but then he would have missed the moment up here, so I can't really critique and say anything bad about it because the exposure sounds nice. We have the detail on the bridge. I would maybe if I could see more interaction with people up here, it would be nice. You could wait a little longer. I don't know. We were, we were working pretty rapidly that day. I remember walking a lot. That's a very nice mood shot. You see the lights have just come on. And 
or the the light is affected by the sun going down in the background. But it's a nice move with the couple here in between the two lights. And then we got two lights here and the two people here, a pair and a pair. Very nice putting them together in that manner. Oh, another image of the that the woman before Robert did. And now the, the, the man is kicking the ball. So this is equally as nice. But what gets me about this shot is that it's harder to see the chairs in this one than the, than the previous uh, person did because it's con in confluence with the background so the chairs don't stand out as much. I'd like to be maybe a little higher to get the chairs down here where the background is the white sand. But we've got the kick. And the kick, the guy's in midair, so that was an exact split second that he knew to push that button. And what's nice about this shot is that he was ready. He had it focused and framed, and he waited for the exact second. So he was ahead of that shot. He was waiting for this to happen. He looked into the future. He knew this guy was going to kick up, and he waited right when he was in midair, and he still had contact with the ball. So that shows you how fast someone can work with the camera, and they look into the future, and that's what we all have to do. So moving on here, let's look at some other shots. John Free. Well, we don't have to look at his shots. We don't have to <laughs> but they're here. We got, my wife and I were here and we got gassed when we took this picture. We got tear gassed. We got trapped in, by, for all the, at the demonstration with the police, but we got out of it. People saved us. This is in an art gallery. And I, I just wanted to get the, the relationships between people, her and him, and then the art in the background. The same with this person. But I wanted the boats. I'm a boat guy, so I needed the boat, needed the pond. And I needed this, how close they could get. I don't know if I made contact with them. And, and of course, if they saw me, my memory's going, but I usually say something like, oh, we're photographers and our assignment is to photograph people in love. And, and I say that as a joke because then the man can't say anything. He can't get angry because then the woman would think bad of him. So it's a little trick I use. And, that, that, oh, and this one I did for my friend Pablo, who is just here, who's my favorite painter. Him and his wife are excellent painters. And his name is Pablo, and he loves Picasso. And I made this image in the Picasso Museum. Not of his paintings, but the back of his paintings. They were all stacked up against the wall, and they weren't supposed to be seen. It was in the little room off to the side. And I saw it, and I got in there, and I thought it would be a nice shot for my friend Pablo, who lives down the street. And this is a, is a favorite picture of mine, only because it's my wife walking away from me. We, we met at, at 10 o'clock in the morning. It was heavily raining. It was very cold. And so Wendy's going to go find a little coffee shop where we can bring the group and get in and out of the rain. So it's a favorite memory of mine, and I love this staircase because I made a few shots here 20 years ago of a couple kissing up here. I love the railings going up. and the, So that's a wonderful memory for me. And that's what's nice about photography. You can go back and visit places. I like this one. I didn't do a very good job on this. It just didn't work out too well for me visually. But this man had a, a big toy horse like this person or an animal see here's the, the head I didn't I didn't print it well enough I wanted this to go with this you see here's his daughter or a little girl on this horse and here he's got one in the bag and I wanted that to be more prominent for the viewer and I failed here I got it more prominent but I don't have anybody on the on the fair on the uh, merry-go-round in the background so these are these are failures for me but I still included them oh, and here's my wife and I, how nice how thoughtful of these people to put this book together and how nice it is for me to look at it and try to offer a little advice and a little encouragement and a little praise. And they did such a wonderful job and they put this to book together and they sent it to me. And it's a big surprise for me today. And I'm overjoyed to help people with their photography. And I've been doing it for many, many years with my son and with my friend Dino. And this is what it is. This book is never gonna go away. This book and the photographs will be around for thousands of years for people to look at and learn from and wonder from and be thankful for. And know that anybody can do this work with a heart and a soul and an intent to put good work out there for other people to see. We want to help our neighbors. We want to help our friends all over the world by giving the wonderful images to look at that they might learn something from about themselves and about others and about a better world. And that's what photography does best. And it was a pleasure for me to look at these photographs and offer my opinion. And thank you so much for sending me this wonderful book.